John Tiger at the Metals Investor Forum in Vancouver, September 7, 2019. I am here with Yale Simpson, Chairman of uh, Rugby Mining. Uh, Yale, welcome to the Metals Investor Forum. Oh, thank you. No, first time I've actually done this one, so it's great. Well, you guys uh, have been sort of stuck in a permitting, title clearing limbo for a number of years now, and uh, we're, I think we're at the threshold of uh, a uh, turnaround in this bear market that's dragged on for, for now eight, eight years. Um, what does it feel like to actually have the team suddenly galvanized and uh, getting new projects uh, beyond the ones that you've yeah. been laboring on in the past uh, um, while? Yeah, well, to, to put a bit of perspective on what you said, um, in a previous corporate life when we had Exeter and Exori going, and I could talk about those, but when we had those going, we, had, we, we, we knew both of those companies were for sale. And when we sold Yaman to Yamana and Goldcorp, we wanted another vehicle for the whole team to move into, and that became Rugby. Because we were still running those other companies, Rugby was this orphan waiting for some impetus from the management that was in those other companies. So, you know, the permitting thing that you mentioned was we spent millions of dollars and five years trying to permit a project for drilling in Colombia in the Western Belt, unsuccessful, major setback, cost us a lot of time, money, and some credibility, right? So we said, okay, let's move forward. We'd sold the other companies. Let's make acquisitions, not just one, but one, two, or three, to get a pipeline of opportunities to try to recreate the value that we had before. Now, you mentioned in your talk that uh, you acquired a database on which a major had spent uh a decade and twenty million dollars uh, developing before giving up on uh, on 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 Colombia, and and they're in an area that's not really uh, impacted uh, the way the uh, project area, the forested area where you were pursuing the Cobrasco project. Uh, however, this these applications pending uh, that this major uh, had in place at the time. What is the hold up there? What needs to happen so that title finally gets granted on these things that were started but never really taken anywhere? There's a lack of bureaucratic impetus. They had one area permitted, uh, which they drilled. Um, they put in maybe a dozen holes, made a discovery of a, a gold porphyry, okay, which we have, okay, uh, which we look at it, and because that area is in way to the south in a coffee growing area, we said, it's not worth pursuing. You're not gonna put a open pit porphyry gold deposit together, despite the fact that every hold ha had significant intersections of porphyry mineralization. So they managed to get one permitted called El Poma. The other projects they had kind of languished in this bureaucratic molasse, if you like, for years. And that was one of the contributing factors as to why they kind of gave up on the country. And also, because it was a major, and it's one of the top five companies in the business, because they were moving into the M&A acquisition of companies, and, and also given the downturn, they said, hey, for now, we're not gonna do any deals. So it was easy for them to say, let's kiss off Columbia. And we bought that entire database and we bought all their applications, and we got their staff, um, all for a relatively nominal amount of money. So it, it was a big opportunity for us. So now we're into this waiting for applications to come through. And now, John, we, on two of the areas, the and they're all reticular blocks. So we are being offered land, which is a breakthrough we've had We've gone to the next stage of meeting with the community, getting the consent of the community to do our work. We've been through that on one of them. So as much as, because we got our brains blown out by not getting a forest extraction permit in Western Columbia, we've hardly wanted to raise our profile and say, oh yeah, but don't worry about it. We're now over here and everything will be fine. We've kept that relatively low profile and advanced other things we're working on until such a time as you say, granted, drilling will start, ready to go. Because there's no doubt in all of these lands, 
because they spent 20 million, there are many, many gold anomalies. You know, here'd be a sample error, there's a vein, 16 grams per ton. Well, we have no indication that it was even followed up on some of this stuff, because they had vast amounts of Columbia with this major. If you follow the space, you'd probably work out who the major is. Yes. <laughs> well, well, we won't go there. <laughs> Don't yeah. want to get you in trouble. Yeah. Um, the peace treaty uh, with the FARC group uh, seems to be unraveling. Uh, is the area where they were historically active, is it anywhere near where you have these uh, no, prospects? No, no, no. They're more towards Venezuela. The, 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 the northeast. I'm talking about. The, if you want to raise the FARC and, and the areas of their movement, that had much more impact on the area to the west that called Cabrasco mm -hmm. that we never got the permit on, um, rather than where we are in, in, in eastern Colombia. Yeah. Now the Philippines, uh, uh, you have the mother load uh, project. You finally got the green light to drill that. You've got, a, I think it's a couple holes that uh, you, you drilled to test uh, two aspects of this uh, this target. Uh, mm -hmm. um, what do you need to see in the deeper sulfide porphyry target, which I gather would have to be an underground mine? What do, what do you need to see to justify continuing with that project? Yeah, well, it's a good question because you're saying if you're drilling through an old gold mine to get to the lower porphyry target, you'd want to be good, okay, because it's not coming to surface as far as we see. In the Philippines, in that part of northern Mindanao, there are a number of porphyries being mined. Uh, the biggest operator is Philex. Um, they're a Filipino company. They do bulk mining on these porphyries. And the porphyries are typically not the billion ton porphyries. There's a lot of low grade, but they tend to come up with 200 million tons at 1%. And those are the sorts of things that they block cave or panel cave, various ways of mining those things. So because we would had success in the past in Chile, as you know, we've always seen the value. If you've got a gold cycle and you have a high grade gold porphyry, it's worth a lot of money in the right cycle. Um, obviously veins are good in any cycle, but that was kind of, so this gave us a kick at the can. We drilled the first hole into the old mother load mine, down, hit it at about 300, and just short of 400 meters deep. It was deeper than we thought. Ran into the old workings with the hole, out the other side and kept that hole going to something like 900 meters, down chasing the porphyry target to depth. And um, those results should be out in a couple of weeks. Now you recently picked up the El Sanyon project uh, in Argentina, your, your old stomping grounds where you guys found the uh, Cerro Moro project. Uh, Cerro Vanguardia is, is a world-class system, you know, I think 9 million ounces of gold mined or 135 million silver, still stuff uh, 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 there. Um, that was in an outcropping area. Uh, you mentioned in your talk that uh, Mirazal uh, had explored the area to the south and got some indications that there's mineralized veins there, but so far nothing to really uh, signal a discovery. And in your area, you are even farther south, but, but given that the, all of this part uh, would have been prospective for similar Cerro Vanguardia type uh, systems, uh, what is the work history in, on this project prior to you guys getting hold of it? Just magnetics. So, so nobody uh, there, did any no, serious they, they work? No, work done on it because it's largely covered. 95% of the area is covered by shallow marine sediments. And shallow is between zero and 30 meters of sediment. So it's not an impediment to doing any development. Obviously, it's not deep, but it is an impediment to geochemistry. So we have, um, the, when it's, and we have a, we didn't, take up the land, we've done a deal to get the land, um, which is on, you know, the deal allows us to get 100% of it, so. Uh, and the land was uh, just on that. The, the, the company that owns it is a private company run by the fellow who was our man on Cerro Moro, okay? So he applied his Cerro Moro experience to take up this land, brought it to us, and we said, okay, we get it, okay? So it's really, right now, it's, it's do we know the rocks are right? Yes, there is enough outcrop to show that the rocks are right. There's Cerro Vanguardia rocks or Cerro Moro rocks. We do also know that there's structures there. A magnetic shows them very clearly. 
And you could look at it from a regional perspective, as you might be alluding to. It's hard to imagine there not being a deposit there. The challenge is, is he going to he going to find it for a million or a hundred million? How are you going to unravel this? And, and it's early days for us to quite know how we're going to do that um, without just drilling the hell out of it, because you like to have geochemistry to drill on. And are there any geochemical tools you can use in this gravel-covered area? Um, this is a leading question, John, because you'd mentioned it to me before that other people um, are looking at some of these very low-level gold detection um, scenarios within waters and what have you. It, because it's so shallow, all you need to do is get a bedrock sample. I, I mean, I can see using various other techniques, but I think we'll end up getting a bedrock sampling rig and it'll just go boom, come up. Because all we want to do is because you have structures and, and we're looking at the flexures and all the things that make epithermal deposits there, all we need to do is prioritize these structures. Then we're happy enough to drill holes because if it's only 20 meters to cover, you can drill a 100 meter hole, that's not expensive. <laughs> it's just figuring out which would be the best structure to drill. So, so if we're dealing with a Cerro Vanguardia or Cerro Moro type of vein system, um, and you're going to be drilling these, these vertical holes, uh, do these, in this part of Argentina, do they have um, any degree of alteration halo that can give you a clue that, ah, we're getting close to uh, something where we need to focus more? Um, not as much as you'd hope for. Mm. These are called low sulfidation systems, and for those people that, who know Vein systems, there's high sulfidation, low sulfidation. High sulfidation systems, very showy, lots of alteration, geochemistry is great. Low sulfidation systems at Cerro Moro, if you're a meter from the vein, you have no idea. Oh, you'd get some, some, but not really anything exciting. It was the geochemistry that helped us. I, I must say though, um, the what makes these deposits work, John, is, is the com combination of understanding the stratigraphy, the structure, and the textures of the veins. We got really good at that, and that's why we made the discoveries, like the last one was Zoe discovery. That was purely on science, looking at, at that. And I think once we get into it and apply that knowledge, because it's the same people, I think we'll, we'll have success. Um, but back to your question, um, Low sulfidation systems, it could be right that far apart, and you probably don't know that the vein is right there. And of course, because they have a relatively short vertical mineralized extents, uh, there's no guarantee that the mineral, mineralized portion will be exposed at surface. Uh, um, are there any tools that if you get into a, a vein system that you can figure out whether it's the roots of it with everything yeah. else gone, or, or you just That was our it. success at Cerro Moro. We, the, the best vein didn't outcrop to speak of, it was a few centimeters wide, and it turned out at depth to be meters wide of high-grade mineralization. We worked out that even with a vein going, well, Zoe is an example, it was going half a gram at surface, and it was about two centimeters wide. And so why would you want to drill that at depth? Because the textures were right, and it also had some associated geochemistry that said, if you go down, it should get better. Then we matched it to the right part of the geology, and bang, multiple ounces, multiple meters. And that's what, why we would go back to that area, because we think chances are we're as good as any. Certainly when we had Sarah Morrow, John, we followed Anglo Gold, right? They spent 10 years there. And then we made the discovery. So we think we got a lot of experience in that region and, and we're looking forward to getting at it. If I recall correctly, Santa Cruz uh, province had uh, invented a very strange policy where they were charging a royalty on the value of ounces and pounds in royalty. the ground, which uh, yeah. like, like makes absolutely no sense. Uh, whatever happened to that? Did that get shot down in the and courts? I, honestly, I don't know. I don't know. I know the, the biggest issues they have in Santa Cruz province 
um, today for the mining companies is labor issues. Is Argentina is well known for very strong labor unions, and for the producers, it's giving them a lot of grief. Uh, we found that Argentina was really easy to get permitted in terms of applications being granted. All of that was straightforward. In terms of the environmental reviews, it was very systematic, very timely. That was fine. The, the, the issues there really related to the fiscal structure, as you're alluding to, and I can't give you the answer. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not quite there yet. I do look at it very much that because the quality of the targets is so superb on a worldwide scale, very high grade deposits, that for the average investor, he's not too concerned about an advanced royalty. He's waiting for the discovery. And I don't wanna, you know what I mean? I don't wanna belittle the fact that these become problems. At the early stage, however, the reward for the investor is you making that discovery and getting multiple drills on it like we did when we had Cerro Moro. We had four rigs going at a time. For years, we'd have four rigs going. And Argentina's going through another uh, debt default cycle. Uh, uh, does that in any way uh, impact exploration activity in Argentina? We, we saw the same sort of thing in the early 2001, 2002. Um, that's when they went through the crisis. They revalued the currency, and then and they revamped the Mining Act, and that led to the resurgence in activity at that time. Uh, people say that Argentina can often be good for about 10 years before they have another crisis, and then they reinvent themselves, and away they go. And I, I, I don't want to be flippant about their economy and the way they do business because the mining companies are operating there and they seem to ride it out just like Anglo Gold has ridden out two cycles like okay? and a continuing is that used to be their most profitable mine so I um, it can be it can be challenging when you're going through that especially when currency controls come in yeah well but, you can always bring money in you just yeah. can't take you can't it out, take it out. <laughs> No, and Which is not going to yeah, be a problem for an exploration company. But it was interesting, John, when we, were, when we had Cerro Moro and it was for sale, the company was for sale, Yamana who bought us, they looked at these currency controls, they looked at the advanced royalties, they looked at all of these issues, they looked at the potential labor issues. But what makes up for it is a superb quality of the assets that people come up with. People don't realize how good Cerro Vanguardia is on this planet. And that's the property to the northwest. And these are superb vein systems, really high, especially in silver, extraordinarily high in silver. Yes. And so that's what the reward is. Get onto one of those high grade veins and, and it'll be great in terms of the discovery cycle. When would you hope to uh, get working on the El Sanyon project? We're working on it now uh, in terms of um, I, I, I'm pretty sure, John, and I'm the chairman, I'm not the guy on the ground, that the follow-up detailed magnetic work, which was so successful at Cerro Moro, we, we ran magnetics on 50 meter lines, okay? Um, that's incredibly detailed, but that's how we picked up the, the little flexures that led to the discoveries like Zoe. So I think that's the work that's being done now, um, and it's, you know, it's winter time, so I guess they manage. It's not a nice part of the world in the winter, but but um, I think that work is being done now. Mm -hmm. And I haven't seen a schedule laid out yet as to, okay, what are you gonna do after that? Are you gonna just get a rig in there, try to drill shallow holes? I don't know, I don't know. We haven't had the property that long, right? We've only announced Yeah, no, it. it's just a, a month couple or of months, so, right? right? Yeah. yeah. Well, I have been talking with Yale Simpson of Rugby Mining at the Metals Investor Forum. Thank you, Yale. Thank you, John.